was dead to begin with. There's no doubt whatever about that. The register of his burial was signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, and the chief mourner. Scrooge signed it, and Scrooge's name was good upon change for anything he chose to put his hand to. Old Marley was as dead as a doornail. Scrooge knew he was dead. Of course he did. Scrooge and Marley were partners for I don't know how many years. Ah, but he was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone with Scrooge. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner. And once upon a time, of all the good days in the year, on Christmas Eve, old Scrooge sat by in his counting house, a grim, cheerless place if there ever was one. The door of Scrooge's counting house was open that he might keep his eye upon his clerk, Bob Cratchit, who in a cold and dismal little cell beyond, worked at his ledgers. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three, twenty-six, twenty-nine, nine, thirty-two. Merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Christmas Day. Bob Cratchit. Uh, yes, Mr. Scrooge. Stop that infernal carolling. Yes, sir. Sing nine on Christmas carols at my very door. Go on, get away from my door. Aww. Go somewhere else and bellow your blasted carols. Why, Governor? It's an old custom at Christmas time, you know. Yes, and I don't want any of your old customs. Take your fellow fools and go away. All right, sir. Merry Christmas anyway, sir. Blech. Christmas. Cratchit! Yes, Mr. Scrooge? Now you get that letter from Higgins and Blackthorn, Cratchit. And after that, you can pop over to Parthagill's and tell Ephraim Parthagill you've come after the seventeen shillings and six pence he's owed me since Mitchellmas. Mr. Parthagill's wife has been ill, sir. It been Christmas, sir. Christmas! You mention that word to me once more, Bob Cratchit, and I'm... A Merry Christmas, Uncle! A Merry Christmas, Bob! Merry Christmas, Mr. Fred! God save you, Uncle! Bah! Humbug! Christmas a humbug, Uncle! I'm sure you don't mean that. I mean just that. Exactly that. Merry Christmas. What right have you to be merry? What reason have you? You're poor enough. Well, what right have you to be dismal about Christmas, Uncle? You're rich enough. Bah. Now, Uncle, don't be cross. Well, what else can I be when I live in such a world of fools? What's Christmas to you but a time for paying bills without money? Merry Christmas. A time for finding yourself a year older and not an hour richer. If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips would be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Uncle! Now, nephew, keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it? But you don't keep it, Uncle. Well, let me leave it alone, then. What do you want? Christmas gift, no doubt. I came to wish you a Merry Christmas, Uncle. A Merry Christmas! Much good may Christmas do you. <laughs> Much good it ever has done you. There are many things from which I derive good by which I have not profited materially, I dare say, Uncle. Christmas among the rest. But I have always thought of Christmas time as a good time. A kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. And therefore, Uncle, though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe it has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. God bless Christmas. Hurrah! Let me hear another sound out of you there, Bob Cratchit, and you'll keep Christmas by losing your situation. As to you, nephew, I wonder you don't go into Parliament. You talk enough nonsense. Oh, don't be angry, Uncle. I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Why can't we be friends? Good afternoon. I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, I tried. A Merry Christmas to you, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a Merry Christmas to you, Bob. And the missus. And a tiny Tim. Oh, thank you, Mr. Fred. Same to you, sir. Good day, sir. And a Happy New Year, too. Bah. Humbug. Nonsense. Twaddled flummery. Talking of Christmas and not two sixpence to jingle together in their trousers' pocket. Hey, hey, you there, Bob Cratchit! What are you doing there? I'm only putting a bit more of coal in the fire. You Mrs. put that coal back into the scuttle. A fire. A fire indeed. I can tell you, if you use coal at that rate, you and I will soon be parting company, Bob Cratchit. Do you understand that? 
There's many a young fellow who'd like your situation, you know. I'm sorry, sir. My fingers are getting a little stiff with the cold. Then put on your mittens. Yes, sir. There's someone at the door. Go on, see who it is. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. This is the firm of Scrooge and Marley? What is it? Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Marley's been dead these seven years tonight. I'm Scrooge. Well now, Mr. Scrooge, at this season of the year, it's only fitting that we who are more fortunate should raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. You may not believe it, sir, but many thousands are now in want of common necessities, and hundreds of thousands are in want of the simplest comforts. Uh, Are there no prisons? Well, there are plenty of prisons, sir. And the workhouses? They're still in operation, I trust. I wish I could say they are not, but they are, sir. The treadmill and the poor law are in full vigour, then? Both very busy, sir. Ah, I'm glad to hear that. (laughs) I was afraid, from what you said at first, that something had occurred to stop them in their useful course. No, sir. All these institutions that you mention are flourishing... But it's nevertheless true that some additional provision for the poor and the destitute must be made. A few of us upon change are endeavouring to raise such a fund, you see. And uh, what shall I put you down for? Nothing. Oh, I see. You wish to be anonymous, sir? I wish to be left alone. I don't make merry myself at Christmas time, and I can't afford to help make a lot of idle people merry. I help to support the establishments that take care of the poor. Let those who are badly off go there. Many can't go there, sir. And many would rather die. Then my advice to them is to do so and decrease the surplus population. Besides, I've only your word for it that all this is so. It's the truth, Mr. Scrooge. Well, so be it, then. It's not my business. It's enough for a man to understand his own business and not to interfere with other people's. Mine Mm -hmm. occupies me constantly. Good afternoon. I quite understand, Mr. Scrooge. Good afternoon. Cratchit! Yes, sir. This way. I couldn't help but overhearing. I I should like to contribute a toppence. It isn't much, but it's all I can afford. But there's others in worse situations than I. You're a generous fellow. I wish I might say so of your employer. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Cratchit! Yes, sir? It's too late to have you go to Parthagill's. It'll be closed up for Christmas like these other fools. We may as well close up this place now. Yes, sir, it is a little dark. Uh, Hard to see the figures. Uh, I suppose you'll want the entire day tomorrow. If it's quite convenient. It's not convenient, and it's not fair either. A fine excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. But I suppose there's no good talking. You must have the whole day... I'll see that you're here all early the next morning, you understand? Oh, I will, sir. Thank you. Merry Christmas! Ah! The office was closed in a twinkling, and Bob Cratchit, with the long ends of his white comforter dangling below his waist, went down a slide on Cornhill twenty times in honour of its being Christmas Eve, and then ran home to Camden Town as hard as he could pelt to play with his family at Blind Man's Bluff. Scrooge, on the other hand, took his melancholy dinner in his usual melancholy tavern. Having read all the newspapers and spent the rest of the evening with his banker book, he went to his dismal house. Darkness is cheap, and Scrooge liked it. The yard was so dark that even Scrooge, who knew its every stone, had to grope with his hands through the fog and the frost to find the door. Scrooge walked through his rooms to see that all was right. Sitting room, bedroom, lumber room, all as they should be. Nobody under the table, nobody under the sofa, nobody under the bed, nobody in the closet. He closed the door. He locked himself in. He double locked himself in. And he took off his cravat, put on his dressing gown and slippers and his nightcap, and sat down before the fire to take his gruel. (coughs) What? What's that? Something is coming. Something. Something is is coming closer outside my door. (gasps)
Ebenezer. Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh, no. What do you want with me? I want much of you, Ebenezer. Who, who are you? Ask me who I was. Oh, oh. you're very particular for a ghost. All right, then, who were you? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Jacob Marley? But you're dead. You died seven years ago. Seven years ago this very night. Uh, What's wrong, Ebenezer? Don't you believe in me? I do not. You doubt your senses, Ebenezer? Yes. Yes. Because a little thing affects them. A slight disorder of the stomach makes them cheats. You, you, you can't be a ghost. You may be an undigested bit of beef or a, a blot of mustard or a crumb of cheese. A fragment of underdone potato. <laughs> there may be more gravy than grave about you, whatever you are. <laughs> oh no, you are a ghost. But why? Why do you walk the earth, Jacob? Why do you come to me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men. Travel far and wide to witness what it cannot share, but might have shared on earth and turn to happiness. But tell me, Jacob... What is that chain you wear around you? I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link and yard by yard. By my own free will. Is its pattern strange to you, Ebenezer? Cash boxes. Keys and padlocks, ledgers and purses. Yours was as heavy and as long as this seven years ago. You have labored on it since, Ebenezer. Oh, Jacob, speak comfort to me, Jacob. Comfort I have none to give. I cannot rest, I cannot stay, I cannot linger. Weary journeys lie before me. You traveled fast? Yes, Ebenezer. On the wings of the wind. Uh, seven years dead and traveling all the time. Seven years, Ebenezer. Seven years of remorse. Ebenezer, do you know that no space of regret can make amends for one life's opportunities misused? You were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business! Mankind was my business. Charity, mercy, benevolence, they were all my business. The dealings of my trade were but a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. Jacob, Jacob, don't take on so now, Jacob. Listen to me, Ebenezer. I'm here to warn you that you have yet a chance of hope of escaping my fate. Do you hear that, Ebenezer? Yes, Jacob. Yes, you always were a good friend to me, Jacob. Thanks, Jacob. But... But go on, go on, go on, go on. How shall I escape? Oh, I'm afraid, Jacob. You will be haunted by three spirits. Is that the only chance and hope, Jacob? It is your only chance and hope. Well, then, I think I'd rather not. Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first tomorrow, when the bell tolls one. Couldn't I take them all at once and have it over, Jacob? When the bell tolls one, look for the first spirit. Marty! Jacob Marley! Scrooge awoke. He was lying on his bed, fully dressed. Suddenly, the curtains of his bed were drawn aside, and Scrooge found himself face to face with the unearthly visitor who drew them. It was a strange figure, like a child yet not so like a child as like an old woman. Ebenezer Scrooge! <gasps> Who? Who's that? Ebenezer Scrooge! I have come for you. Uh, are you the spirit, ma'am, whose coming was foretold me? I am that spirit. I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No. Your past. But... What do you want of me? What brings you here to haunt me? You're welcome, Ebenezer Scrooge. Rise, and walk with me. Oh, no, 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 not, not out of the window. I can't do that. I'll fall down. I'm, I'm not a spirit. I'm mortal, and I'll fall. Where are we? What's become of the city? What, and, and there's, there's snow upon the ground. Where are we? These are the shadows of the things that have been. You recognize this countryside? I know every inch. 
Every rock, every tree. And that big building over there. Ah, that building. <laughs> I was a boy there. Yes, I went to school in that horrible place. Do you recollect that car? <laughs> I could walk it blindfold. Strange you should have forgotten it so many years. Come, let us get closer. I see a boy. A solitary child, neglected by his family, alone. Yes, yes, I see. I know that boy. Oh. Oh, I was so lonely. Poor boy. Dear, dear brother, I have come to bring you home. To bring you home, home, home. It's my sister, Fan. Home, sister Fan? Yes, home for good and all. Home forever and ever. Father is so much kinder than he used to be that home's like heaven. He spoke so gently to me one dear night when I was going to bed that I was not afraid to ask him once more if you might come home. And he said, yes, you should, and sent me in a coach to bring you. And you're to be a man, and are to never come back here. But first, we're to be together all the Christmas long and have the merriest time in all the world. You are quite a woman, Sister Fan. Always a delicate creature, whom a breath might have withered, but she had a large heart. So she had. She died a woman, had, as I think, children. One child. True. Your nephew. Your lip is trembling, Scrooge. And what is that on your cheek? It's nothing. Nothing at all. I, I wish I... Ah, it's too late now. What's the matter? Nothing, nothing. The waifs came to my door singing Christmas carols last night, and there was a boy like that among them. A poor, pale, thin little boy in a ragged coat. I should like to have given something, that's all. Is that all? Come, Ebenezer Scrooge. Let us see another Christmas. Do you know this place? Know it? This is the counting house where I was apprenticed. <laughs> oh, Merry Christmas. It's my old master. Yo ho, my boys. Hi ho there, Dick. Cheer up there, Ebenezer. Bless his heart, old Fezzerwig. My master alive again and hosting one of his Christmas parties. Everyone, everyone. I think we're all ready to dance. Clear away, my lads, and let's have some room here. <laughs> Listen to him. Pick your partners. Ah, uh -huh. come here, my dear. There's Mrs. Fezzerwick herself, and there's Dick Wilkins. And the table's all loaded with roast and cider, mince pie and beer. <laughs> That's it. Corkscrew, thread the needle, and back to your places. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a jolly time we used to have. That carefree young man with the light heart and the gay smile. Do you recognize him? Yes, yes, yes. Merciful heaven, how happy I was then. A small matter for old Fessiwig to make those silly first. So full of joy. Small matter. Small indeed. Isn't it? He has spent only a few pounds of your mortal money. It's not that. It's not that spirit. Old Fezziwig has the power to make us happy or unhappy, to make our service light or heavy. His power lies in words and looks and in things so tiny it's impossible to count them. The happiness he gives is quite as great as if it cost a... a... What is the matter? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all, spirit. Something, I think. Speak. Well, only... It's just that I should like to be able to say a word or two or to my clerk. Bob Cratchit, that's all. My time grows short, and we have yet another journey to make. Where now? Come. This is our last visit to the past, Ebenezer. Here, in this little room, with a fair young girl by your side. Do you recognize yourself, Ebenezer? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Spare me this. You're older now. A man in a private life. 
Your face has begun to wear the signs of care and avarice. Your eyes are greedy, eager, restless eyes of the miser. She knows it too, that girl by your side. There are tears in her eyes. No, no, please! It matters little to you, very little, I know that. Belle, have I changed toward you? When we were engaged, we were both poor. Was it better then? Better to be poor? Better at least to be happy. You're changed. You were another man then. I was a boy. You blame me because I've grown wiser? Have I ever tried to break our engagement? In words, no. Never. In what then? In a changed nature, in an altered spirit, in everything that made my love of any value in your sight. So I release you from your promise. Belle. Though at first it may cause you pain to lose me. A very brief pain. But soon it will be dim, like a half-remembered dream. An unprofitable dream. And you will be glad to be awake from such a dream. May you be happy in the life you have chosen, Ebenezer, for the love of whom you once loved. That's enough. Show me no more. Take me home. These are the shadows of things that have been. They are what they are. Do not be. me. No. No more. No more. One shadow more. Do you see this man, Ebenezer Scrooge? This man might have been you, and the woman beside him, your wife, and that girl. That girl might have been your daughter, Ebenezer. She might have called you father. She might have been a springtime in the hybrid winter of your life. Spirit, let me go. Show me no more. Listen now while they speak, Ebenezer. Bell. I saw an old friend of yours today. Who was it? Guess. How can I? It... Oh. I know. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge it was. I passed his office window. It wasn't shuttered. And there was a candle inside, so I couldn't help but seeing him. His partner Marley lies at the point of death, I hear. And there Scrooge sat. All alone. Quite alone in the world, I do believe. Spirit, spirit, I can't bear anymore. Leave me, haunt me no more. Take me back, take me back. Come in, come in, Ebenezer Scrooge, and know me better, man. Who? Who? I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. You've never seen the like of me before. You're different from the other spirit. You're tall, almost a giant. And that great torch you carry. Its light pours into the homes of rich and poor alike. Spirit, take me where you will. Last time I went against my will and learnt a lesson which is working now. If you have anything to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe, Ebenezer Scrooge. Touch my robe. Where have you brought me, spirit? A humble dwelling in a humble street. It's humble enough. Yet there is happiness there. Who? Who are these people? Who's that woman? And the children? These are the family of your clerk, Bob Cratchit. His wife, dressed in a twice-turned gown, but brave in ribbons, laying the table for their Christmas dinner. And the young man with the fork and the stuffing, that's Master Peter Cratchit. And the two little Cratchits. Listen, Scrooge. Here's Martha, Mother. Martha! Merry Christmas, Martha. Why, bless your heart and life. Martha, my dear. Oh, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, Mother. How late you are, my dear. Oh, we did a deal of work to finish up last night, and we had to clear away this morning. Well, never mind, so long as you're here now. Sit you down before the fire and have some warmth. Oh, Lord bless you. Where's Father? He's been to church with Tiny Tim. They'll be along directly. How is Tiny Tim, Mother? Any better at all? Sometimes I think he is. And sometimes I think... Oh. Dear God, 
If anything should happen to Tiny Tim. Mother, you mustn't even think of such a thing. Here they are. Merry Christmas, everybody. Martha, welcome, my dear. Merry Christmas, Father. And Tim. Merry Christmas. Oh, Tim, you darling. Oh, Father, I'm so glad to be home. And we're so glad to have you, Martha. And how did little Tim behave in church, Bob? Oh, as good as gold and better. I like church, Mother. Oh, they sang the nicest songs. I hope people saw me there. Saw you there? And why, Tim? Well, don't you see? Because I'm lame. And if they saw my crutch, it might be pleasant for them to remember on Christmas who it was who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. Oh, bless you, my son. Are we ready to eat, Mother? Come on, let's eat! Yes, children, we're all ready. Come, take your places now. And Bob, wait your turn. There's plenty. Stuffing and dressing and plum pudding for all of you. Martha, you take care of Tiny Tim? Yes, Mother. Oh, boy! Mmm, it looks so good, Mother. Mmm, and it smells good, too! Ah, uh, now, my dears, shall we say grace? Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim would live. I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner, and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. Oh, no, 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 kind spirit. Say he'll be spared. Say he'll live. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. Amen. 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 Now, my dears, with such a dinner, a toast. A Merry Christmas to us all, and God bless us. God bless us, everyone. Now, I give you a toast to Mr. Scrooge, the founder of this feast. Oh, I don't he's like it. Awful. The founder of the feast. Indeed. Who pays you all the fifteen shillings a week. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast on, and I hope he'd have a good appetite for it. Oh, my dear, the children. Christmas Day? Well, it should be Christmas Day, I'm sure, on which one drinks the health of such an odious, stingy, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. You know he is, Bob. Nobody knows it better than you, poor fellow. My dear, Christmas Day. I'll drink his health for your sake. And the days, not for his. Long life to him. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. And I say God bless him to you, Mother. And everyone. He's right. He's right. Yes. God bless. Tim, you are absolutely right. There was nothing of high mark in all this. They were not a handsome family. They were not very well dressed. Their shoes were far from being waterproof. Their clothes were scanty and had known very likely the insides of a pawnbroker's. But they were happy, grateful, pleased with one another and contented with the time. When at last they faded, Scrooge had his eye upon them, and especially on Tiny Tim, until the last. Many calls Scrooge made that night with the ghost of Christmas present. Much they saw, and far they went, and many places they visited, but always with a happy end. The spirits stood beside sick beds, and they were cheerful, on foreign lands, and they were close at home. By poverty, and it was rich, it was a long night if it was only a night, and it was strange, too, that while Scrooge remained unaltered in his outward form, the ghost grew older, clearly older. My life upon this globe is very brief, Ebenezer. It ends tonight. Tonight? Hark. The hour has come. Oh, no, no, not yet, not yet. There, there, there are still more things I wish to learn. These you will learn from still another spirit. Still another spirit, Ebenezer. Scrooge looked about him for the ghost. It had vanished, and he found himself once more in his bed, in his dressing gown, and his nightcap on his head. He heard the clock strike, and then he remembered the prediction of old Jacob Marley, and lifting up his eyes, beheld the third spirit, a solemn phantom, 
shrouded in black, draped and hooded, coming toward him slowly and silently like a mist along the ground. I know you. You you are the ghost of Christmas yet to come. You'll show me the shadows of things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. Answer me, spirit, ghost of the future. I fear you more than any specter I've seen. Yet I know your purpose is to do me good, and as I hope to live to be another man from what I was, lead on. Spirit, why? Why have you brought me here again? Here to Bob Cratchit's home, but it's not the same. What? Why is it so quiet? So very quiet here. Mother, mother, please. My son, my little son, tiny dear. Oh, I loved him so. Oh, mother dear, you mustn't. It's almost time for father to be home. Don't let him see you crying. Yes. Yes, Martha. He's late tonight. He walks slower than he used to, and yet I've known him to walk very fast indeed, with Tiny Tim on his shoulder. So have I, Mother. But he was light to carry, and his father loved him, so that it was no trouble. No trouble. Oh, Bob. Good evening, my dear. You're late, Bob. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, my dear. I I went to the churchyard today. I wish you could have gone with me. It would have done your heart good to see how sweet and green a place it is. But you'll see it often, I promised him. Yes, I promised Tiny Tim we'd walk there on a Sunday. Father, dear. My son. My little son, Tiny Tim. And I loved him so. It's God's will, Bob. I'm trying to understand it, my dear. Oh, that's cruel. Cruel. Spirit, can't you give me one ray of hope that I may change all that? That Tiny Tim may live? Where are you taking me now? Here? On Common Street, Spirit? What is there for me to learn here? Who... Who is this man? And why is Mrs. Dilber here? Hmm... I don't know much about it either way. I only know he's dead. When did he die? Last night, I believe. <laughs> it's likely to be a very cheap funeral for upon my life. I don't know anyone to go to it. <laughs> Suppose we make up a party and volunteer. I don't mind going if a lunch is provided. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come to think of it, I'll bet I was his best friend. What? We used to nod to each other when we met in the street. <laughs> <laughs> well... He left me a little something after he departed us. Are those his bed curtains? Ah, bed curtains. And his blanket. You don't mean to say you took his blanket and his curtains rings and all with him lying there? Whose else's do you think? He isn't likely to take cold without them, I dare say. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he didn't die of anything catching, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Spirit, help me. Who is this man that died? Is there no one to mourn the poor creature? No one to follow him to the grave? Perhaps they'll give him a green grave at least. Like poor Tiny Tim. Perhaps. Spirit, where are we now? Merciful heaven. The churchyard. Overrun by grass and weeds, choked with too much burying. Desolate, lonely, crumbling gravestones. Spirit, before I draw nearer to that gravestone, answer me one question. Ah, 
Are these shadows of things that will be? Or, or are they shadows of things that may be only? Ah. Will, will you not speak to me, spirit? What is that grave to which you point? Ah, now I see it. Uh -huh, there's writing on that stone. The name on the gravestone is... Ebenezer Scrooge. Ebenezer Scrooge! Oh, no, no, spirit. No, 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 no. Hear me. I'm not the man I was. Why show me this if I am past all hope? Tell me that I can change these dreadful shadows you've shown me by an altered life. I'll honor Christmas in my heart. I'll, I'll try to keep it all the year. I'll live in the past, the present, and the future. And I'll not shut out these lessons that they teach. Tell me, spirit. Oh, go on. Tell me. Tell me that I can sponge away the writing on that stone. Spirit, I beg you, spirit, I beg you. Spirit, I promise, I promise on my knees, I promise, I promise, I like... Why? Why, what's this? Oh, I'm home. In my own bed, in my own room. And the sun. The sun shining, it's clear, it's bright, no fog. What a beautiful day. Oh, glorious, glorious. Hey, boy. Oh boy! Yes, sir? What's what's today? What's that, sir? What is what day is it, my fine fellow? Today? Why, it's Christmas Day! <laughs> Christmas Day! Then I haven't missed it! The spirits have done it all in one night, all in one night, heaven be praised! Uh how's that, sir? Listen, my lad, uh, you know where the poultry is in the next street? I should say I do. Ha! <laughs> An intelligent boy, a remarkable boy! Tell me, do you know if they sold the prize turkey that was hanging in the window? The one as big as me? <laughs> what a delightful boy. It's just a pleasure to talk with ye. Yes, my buck. It's hanging there now, sir. That's wonderful. Go down, will you? And tell them to send it to Bob Cratchit and his family on Broad Street. And mind you, they're not to know who paid for it. Go along. Hurry, hurry, my lad. Here, here, wait a minute. Here's half a crown for your trouble. Yes. Yes, sir. And Merry Christmas, sir. Ha <laughs> ha! And a Merry Christmas to you, boy. Oh, I don't know what to do. I'm as light as a feather. I'm as happy as an angel. I'm as merry as a schoolboy. Merry Christmas! <laughs> a Merry Christmas to everybody. A Happy New Year to all the world. Woohoo! My dear ma'am, how do you do? I... I beg your pardon? Well, you, ma'am, aren't you the gentlewoman who came by my office in regard to that charity? Why, yes, sir. A Merry Christmas to you. Uh, yes, sir. Allow me to ask your pardon, ma'am. And will you have the goodness to accept... I prefer to whisper this. What? But Lord bless me! My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? If you please. Now, not a farthing less. <laughs> A great many back payments are included in it, I assure you. <laughs> Will you do me that favor? Well, my dear sir, I don't know what to say to such munific- no! Don't say anything, please. Come and see me. Will, will you, will you come and see me? I will. I will indeed. <laughs> Thank you. I am much obliged to you. Thank you fifty times. Bless you. Merry Christmas! Scrooge went to church and walked about the streets, and watched the people hurrying to and fro, and patted children on the head, and questioned beggars, and looked down into the kitchens of houses, and up to the windows, and found that everything could yield him pleasure. In the afternoon, he turned his steps toward his nephew's house. Fred, darling, I believe someone's at the door. Fred! Why, bless my soul, who's that? It's I, your Uncle Scrooge. I have come to dinner. Who is it, Fred? It's my uncle. As I live and breathe. Will you let me in, Fred? Yes, of course. Let him in. Come in, uncle. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Scrooge was at home in five minutes. Nothing could be heartier. The next morning, Scrooge was early at his office. He went early for a reason. If he could only be there first and catch Bob Cratchit coming late. 
That was the thing he'd set his heart upon. At last Bob came. His hat was off before he opened the door, his comforter too, and he was on his stool in a jiffy, driving away as if he were trying to overtake nine o'clock. Six and carry the one, twenty-four and carry the two, thirty-one and eight and nine. Crush it! Yes, sir. What do you mean by coming in at this time of day? Why, I'm very sorry, sir. I am behind my time. Yes, yes, I think you are. Oh, it's only once a year, Mr. Scrooge. I'll not stand this sort of thing any longer. And therefore, Bob Cratchit, I'm about to raise your salary. (laughs) Mr. Scrooge, are you quite yourself, sir? No, no, thank heaven, I'm not quite myself. Merry Christmas, my good fellow. A merrier Christmas than I've given you in many a year. I shall raise your salary, and we'll see what we can do for Tiny Tim and the rest of your family, huh? <laughs> Bob, make up the fire, make it up, and then and, and buy another coal scuttle before you dart another eye, Bob Cratchit. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all, and infinitely more. To Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, as good a man as the good old city knew. He had no further intercourse with the spirits, and it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us, of all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. 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 God bless us, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christ, Lord. So glitchy. <laughs> okay. Does that make sense? I think so. So do the whole, that whole thing. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. I'm, I'm no Orson Welles. I'm not going to give you trouble. <laughs>